You know what's crazy? Microsoft Loop still exists. Yeah, that's right. You haven't thought about it in like a year and neither have I because who the heck would? No, just seriously. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about Microsoft Loop and some of the updates that have come out with this product in the last little while that I've not talked about it. So if I go to the Microsoft community page and I check out the history of changes. Fun fact, you can't access it from a public page. There's actually a forum answer someone put out there and was like, why can't I check out the updates? Yeah, really silly. So let's get started with Loop and check out the product itself. All right, I'm in Microsoft Loop. It took me a while to log in. There seems to be some weird redirect stuff going on. But anyways, if I go into the workspace, I'm just gonna take a look at how the product has changed. If we click the top right and press version history, actually that's just a version history for the pages changed, okay. Nope, there's no update showcase on this news, really. They don't really talk about the product. Hey, Twitter. Is Twitter where I have to go to tell you what the heck is up with Loop? When's the last time that posted? Oh, July 17th, actually recently. Ooh, this is a big update. Components are now available on Microsoft OneNote Windows app. Loop components are also available in OneNote in Microsoft Teams. So they have made some interesting updates here where essentially you can add different components from Loop and then that would cross sync not only between your OneNote app, but also your Loop components. So you see this in a lot of different ways. They've had Loop components in Microsoft Teams for a while, but what essentially this is, is it's similar to sync blocks in something like Notion, but it goes across different products. This is something that has been a really good opportunity for them to take advantage of for a while. So I guess a little bit of a sync back and forth between OneNote and Loop is not bad. And there are some other updates that are pretty cool. Let's check this one out. Seems like you can draft a page based on another page and change content using Copilot. So this is what I was wondering for sure. They pretty much integrated Copilot with something like directly adjacent to Microsoft's partner OpenAI. So if I type slash AI, curious if you know, Copilot must be a premium version. What is nice though in the product I'll notice is that at the bottom there is a template gallery now that kind of pops up and showcases everything. So if I click on something like project brief here. I can either use the template and choose to include the content or not, which is a very nice option here. So this is great to showcase dummy content for people. This is definitely a step up from something that Notion has where you don't really have the option to showcase it to others and then add or remove the content. So for me, this is great for example videos if I want to showcase the functionality. Once I press include content, I then can go through and make adjustments here. It is pretty similar to Notion in a lot of regards. I was pretty harsh on it when it originally came out. Some interesting features that exist that do not exist in Notion are things like the row height, the tall and short row height, I think is interesting. I don't really notice much of a difference, but if that functionally would work, it'd be great. It does have some minor UI UX differences. Like there's not an open hover button here. You have to go to the top right and then it will open up the page and you're able to type out here. It has that nice markdown functionality with the forward slash checklist, date selection, everything that you'd expect out of a nice note-taking experience. And when it comes to fields, it's still pretty limited in comparison to other products, but a label is always a good thing. It does give you some example groups. You can make your own one, but I think it's nice that it has things like uh, priority. That's good. Doesn't seem to create it from scratch, which is intriguing. So I press that, I go to label Kanban. I selected. Interesting. It doesn't give me those direct options. So what was the point, I guess? Maybe it just gave me examples or that's a bug. That seems to be a bug, to be honest, because I don't understand what the point of me selecting priority is. If it did, okay, it then worked when I changed it. That seems like a bug. Okay, so that's something to, to note. Priority does exist with like low, medium, and high. You can change those, delete options. I like this addition. A couple things to note about columns. They are pretty fluid to move and to change the size and stuff. And that's where loop components come in really well. If you add these tables to like a Teams chat and you're trying to fill out a table or a questionnaire, they are really good. Same with the voting field, which I think is cool, where you can essentially vote on something. And if enough people upvote something, you can see who voted on it and that's really nice overall ui ux though not a lot has really changed i don't think there is this little bit of an ideas page that i believe wasn't there before but overall switching between workspaces is cool you can like 
go between multiple different workspaces. Like this is just the getting started page. This could be used for different aspects of a company and you could invite people specifically to these workspaces, which I find intriguing. So if you have people in different departments or you just want to invite everyone to an HR workspace, definitely something to try out. But a lot of the updates that have happened on this product, it seems like are all being acknowledged on Twitter, which I know is the case, but I don't really like how they don't just have like a what's new page, but I do like the Kanban view. So let's take a look at when I do backslash, what other views exist that maybe didn't prior. So if I do backslash, you'll notice that there's a bunch of templates, which is cool regarding like views. So team retrospective, what's that gonna look like? Oh, seems like it's a Kanban view. So they have tables and boards now. They had tables prior. I do not believe they had boards. So this is a great addition. They're slowly rolling it out and slowly stealing the ideas from all of the other products that have been doing the same thing for years. Sorry, I had to get my one jab in. But seriously, I'll take this board movement. For those who never experienced this in the Microsoft ecosystem outside of Planner, I'm sure this is a step up considering Planner is three scoops of buttocks. And I just wanted to show you one of the most unique things I found, which is actually a uh, Q&A functionality. So if I type backslash, you'll notice one of the templates here is Q&A session, which is pretty cool. So you can have this be like, what's your favorite color? Where did you grow up? And as you would imagine, you could, for example, make this a intro questionnaire to your team, right? Like team intros slash icebreakers and share this with the team prior to the first meeting. And I would say something like red or black is actually my favorite color nowadays. I feel like I grew up saying red, so now I just always say it. Where did I grow up? Uh, I grew up in South Suburban Chicago land. And you'll see who answered it, hover over, you'd see their email and their name. And then from there, you know, that would be a nice icebreaker situation. I find this one more intriguing than most of the features in here because everything else, I won't lie, is pretty copy paste. There's not like a whole uniqueness to this outside of the fact that it does integrate with the loop components cross application. I guess a small thing to note is that you can actually work with people outside of your organization now by giving them page links, which is pretty big because when it comes to these different things, you know, having third party access to, you know, Google Sheets, for example, and even in this case, you know, those public Excel links, even if they're not in your organization, that's pretty big. So I, I didn't realize that you couldn't actually share this with people outside of your organization as a guest. That's kind of crazy that that wasn't a thing before, but I mean, shout out to Loop for adding that recently. This product overall does seem like it has enough components to where I could do a lot more reviews on it. I could showcase all the functionality of this wannabe notion. So if anyone does have interest in me going through a application that would be willing to reference NSYNC and 90s boy bands in their Twitter to try to stay relevant, please let me know in the comment section down below. With that being said, thank you so much for listening to me rant and rave about a product that is mid at best. And I'll see you in the next one.